Uh, so hello everybody. Um, tonight I'm going to try to have a, a pretty detailed discussion on the Amazon um, and I just wanted to emphasize the importance of a lack of information out there. Um, there is not a whole lot of uh, really detailed research on perhaps the most important aspect of our planet, which is the wildlife. Um, there is a tremendous amount, you can hear the dog barking outside again, uh, kind of laughing here and saying, yes, this is definitely a very important topic. Uh, the, uh, but uh, basically, I, I just wanted to re-emphasize no matter what kind of uh, you know, you can really help personally. I was just completely shocked at uh, the uh, lack of information um, and just the degree to which uh, basically almost everything on Earth has been populated and farmed. Um, so uh, it is actually a very critical discussion uh, that we're having here. We're looking at the perhaps most important uh jungle on our planet and this is the only thing we got left here so uh it just kind of uh i'm hearing the dog really bark here now uh, but i want to mention this again is that you know if you look up on the uh, database for uh wildlife uh animals and try to see uh how many uh gorillas are left on the planet wild uh and there is probably only about 600 believe it or not um, and of those, that number is probably even a high estimate. Um, I've looked at where they are located in Africa, and they only have a few acres or even a few miles in some areas uh, of habitat, and it's basically completely gone. So uh, what we're studying today is very important. Uh, I'm going to pause for a second uh, just because I'm going to try to catch some breath here. Um, but it's a very important topic. Um, I'm actually looking at the earthquake map. Uh, this is a little bit easier to see. It makes the jungle look pretty good. Uh, you know, there may be a lot of image processing done on this image to make it look this great, um, but we're gonna try to see uh, the details uh, as much as possible here. So there's just so much to talk about. Um, I've actually uh, lived in Brazil uh, for about a year, so I'm pretty familiar with Brazil. And I just wanted to mention that um, when I was down in Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, and a few other places in South America, I actually chose not to go to the jungle. Um, you know, I had that choice to maybe fly into Manaus. Um, but something just uh, told me that maybe I shouldn't go to the jungle. Um, and actually, I, I really am thankful that I never have been to the jungle. Um, I've read a book about a guy that... Uh, tried to uh, hike the entire length of the Amazon. I was not impressed at all. Um, it was a very, um, it was actually kind of a military guy, I think an ex-military guy that wanted to hike the whole length of the Amazon jungle and did it by backpack. But anyway, so uh, there's also another book uh, just specifically about the Amazon that I've um, kind of, it's called, uh, it's a backcountry book, but uh, anyway. So I'm sorry, I, I have to really catch my breath here, but um, my first, uh, yeah, I mean, my first knowledge um, of what's going on here, you know, there's just so much to discuss. Um, we're talking about the most important river by far on our planet. Um, this gets, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, five times or ten times the amount of water uh, drainage, ten times, right, uh, or five times at least, uh, compared to any other river on our planet. So there's just a tremendous amount of water, and this river is just a major river here. So, so I, I wanted to re-talk about this for a second. Um, and mention uh, that I'm going to turn off some uh, climate uh, climate maps here, but I wanted to mention something about this here um, before we get into too much detail. You can see here there's quite a lot of farming coming into the jungle here. This probably extended all the way out into here uh, at one point in terms of forest. 
um, and you can also see up in here as well so uh, but what I wanted to mention is that um, you know there's a big city called Manaus right in the middle of this and it's really terrible when you think about it because this is a major city multiple millions of people right in the center of the essentially jungle um, <clears throat> so uh, there is really very little hiding spaces for the animals and wildlife. Um, so in general, Brazil has very large cities located here, here, and also even at the very tip of the ocean. So all on the coast <clears throat> is basically becoming populated in South America. Um, and that means that a lot of the wildlife has been pushed back up into the end of the river. So hey everybody, my friend just stopped over. We're gonna go for a walk and talk. It's really late at night right now. Um, we're trying to get this discussion going as soon as possible. Um, but uh, what I wanted to do is give everybody a quick uh, summary here. So basically, uh, this is the main part of the jungle in the side here and what I wanted to mention is that because Manaus is here the deepest part of the jungle is actually back in here and actually in here there's a couple pockets of rain we're gonna look at some rain maps and some other things but actually these areas out here are just as vital because there's multiple habitat uh, you need to, to have a proper jungle you need to have dry areas as well as wet areas so some of these mountainous areas and also this side so anyway I'll be back in a little bit to discuss this but yeah thank you so much and uh, definitely take a look at these detailed maps in the river systems uh, essentially you can start to see some of the farming in here um, but these are so vital uh, these little lakes here that are actually river slash lakes uh, become some very important habitat uh, for the wild so we're gonna actually look at these in particular uh, as very important conservation areas uh, I can post the link to this I'm using uh, this USGS map primarily because it looks uh, great so uh, you can zoom in see and you can see that they're definitely even in the deepest part of the jungle they're starting to pull in with farming here uh, so we want to look at uh, exactly what's going on uh, in the details here so sorry about that uh just a major situation here in the town uh wanted to walk around and see so uh what i wanted to emphasize is the uh climate map so essentially what i wanted to discuss with you is basically this climate concept um, you can see there's a couple pockets here and including even along the coast here and down here um so uh this is basically the front door and the back door to the Amazon um, so I want to start from the front door perspective and really emphasize the importance of this south part here this pink zone kind of a blue zone and then a green zone coming up through here um, basically the Caribbean right so actually uh, I didn't really uh, you can see that actually the pink zone is very critical here uh, and then on the back side these three little pink spots um, not to underestimate the importance of these three spots because it's such deep jungle here and right along the mountain range so the importance of these spots uh, is basically goes back to uh, Colombia um, and this the importance of this region in particular right here um, I'm gonna circle that uh, and highlight that so basically uh, these zones uh, are very important because you have the mountain range and there's a lot of biodiversity that depends on basically the, the varying climates through here so the climate is fairly consistent um, and you can see up in here there's actually a big uh, change in the climate that's similar to there so uh, that's kind of how I think it's very important to remember um, those spots so again this spot here uh, this spot here uh, and we'll go into some of the and I'm actually going to bring this all the way out to here um, and actually I should have included that river portion right there so um, I'm going to uh, circle this portion right here 
uh, so you can see the importance of that whole area in Colombia. So uh, basically, these spots are very important as well as the center piece right here. Uh, and then uh, also we're talking about the uh, ocean and uh, coral reefs and some other things. Um, but uh, let me just switch between these two maps so you can see again here. So again, you can see the importance of this river chain here, and particularly that spot right in here. Uh, now, uh, the reason that uh, places like this are very important is because it becomes more swampy and almost lakey uh, in some of these areas. So those lakes uh, can be very vital uh, for all kinds of life. Um, and we're basically talking about 1,209 different types of species even within a square mile. So there's quite a lot of different uh, species and there's definitely different types of monkeys and uh, animals that live in each one of these zones uh, and they basically really depend on unique habitats. Um, so I, I just wanted to emphasize um, you know, the stress of the situation globally right now uh, for people and wildlife, right? We can see that uh, there's quite a lot of farming coming in through here um, already and getting very close to these regions right here. So uh, it's just very important um, to look at this because uh, these habitats uh, are vital. Um, so I wanted you to look carefully at this map and notice that there's a lot of farmland all the way up into here uh, and this region as well. So, uh, and the problem is those three little pockets are right along here as well. So this is gonna probably be a multi-day study, even a, a lifetime study uh, for me to look at carefully. Um, I just wanted to say that this city of Manaus right here, you can kind of see there's a, a branch of this river that heads out here, and that's basically one of the main questions here that has all been farmed in through here. Um, and you can see this also branches out into here. And you can see there's a special branch here that gets to be quite big, uh, wide river, almost a lake. Um, and that heads out here up into Venezuela. And there's actually a separate branch uh, and floodplain right in here, but it's actually quite a bit uh, drier. Um, there's also some uh, quite a lot of rain too in here at some time. But, uh, so I'm going to run through this map really quickly to give you all 12 months of the year and you can start to see the importance of these three little spots that I was discussing. Um, it's going to load in here and you can see there's very heavy rains in those three areas um, and it almost looks like four there um, and we're going to go to March and you can see there's a definitely a pocket right along here in Colombia that's super important that we want to discuss and now you start to see the north part of the jungle uh, really get uh, some rain here um, and you can see there's a little spot right there um, and we definitely want to look at each of these and now it's extremely heavy rain this is a full meter uh, or mul even multiple so uh, August you can see now uh, and then we're gonna get to September uh, and October um, and November and then we're gonna get back to December again and January so uh, now you can see that there's definitely a branch that heads down here and then some spots right here and here but definitely uh, very dry uh, with no rain right there so and there's a little pocket right here that's super important to think about this is where we actually get the world's most uh, lightning um, so uh, in general this is the river map and and I would really say that uh, you know what you know basically down here in the Manaus region um, you know there's population and there's also quite a lot of farming heading into here so uh, the main problem is that uh, some of the pollution will go down the river here, particularly on this branch and this branch because of the farming, uh, chemical waste, uh, and even fertilizers and other things that could be very uh, disastrous. So uh, basically what happens is that you have different types of 
uh, wildlife, depending on the uh, type of the river. Um, the bigger branches of the river, there may be one type of fish, uh, and then the smaller branches out into here. And you can see there's definitely a weird little uh, piece of this river that comes in through here, uh, and then heading out into the edge of Colombia. Now, this whole separate branch is another branch here in Venezuela. Uh, as well as this is the Lake Maracibo, and then you see this whole floodplain coming down between these Andes. So you basically have this high mountain range right here. Um, so this is going to be a start. Uh, I'm going to have to save this presentation. We're going to have to look at a lot of details uh, in general about what's going on. Um, I'm going to uh, try to come back to this uh, in detail tomorrow. Um, but uh, you can start to see... Uh, essentially what's going on here so yeah and um, we want to make this pretty fun and exciting to look at um, you know and, and kind of explore what's been happening um, and uh, you know I would really encourage uh, some people I'm gonna try to post some of these images that I've been working on here um, and then you can start to see uh, exactly where the situation is so I wanted to close kind of on solstice and the uh, equinox uh, and basically where uh, the sun is basically right at the equator. So that month is going to be September uh, and March here. So there's going to be uh, basically some rain that we need to study, uh, particularly in those months, uh, because that's when the sun is essentially directly over the Amazon. Um, and we can kind of see uh, what's been going on there. So we want to kind of divide up this uh, discussion uh, into uh, four or even five sections here. We have this blue section up here, um, which is basically Colombia and Venezuela. And then we have this middle pink section, uh, which is basically the uh, main Brazilian chunk, uh, as well as the Peruvian, Ecuadorian, and part of the Bolivian. And then this last chunk is kind of the... Uh, Delta region, I probably should have included uh, this part here as well, but there's essentially three cities right along here, um, and then all of this coastline, uh, and then the farming region that's kind of been uh, uh, starting to get into the jungle here. So in terms of the river system, there's quite a lot that we want to look at. Uh, we want to look at some of the critical points here. Um, in the middle of the jungle, uh, and I probably should have been included another points here and here uh, as well. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. So basically we want to look at some of these critical river junctures, uh, and then we also want to look at uh, basically this whole floodplain, uh, including the main flood area right here, uh, which is the Amazon's uh, floodplain and then there's also these other ones uh, right here where there's actually some major uh, Brazilian cities uh, and then the Venezuela this whole river is actually a major river um, right in here so uh, and then on the uh, Colombia side there is definitely a spot right in here that's very important this is the Bogota area there's like a river that runs right through here and then there's also the Lake Maracibo area uh, so that was kind of how we wanted to look at that so here's kind of the satellite perspective um, and basically this is the internal spots uh, in the jungle and then kind of some external uh, spots that I want to look at um, there's maybe another spot uh, right in here which is the Venezuelan um, spot here I think that's the exit right there so uh, we want to look at that carefully uh, as well as this is the main uh, Amazon. So basically we wanted to study all these major exits uh, of water um, off of the Amazon jungle here um, and basically also the internal as well as this main part here. And really this is the central part of the uh, river. We wanted to look carefully at that. And then this is further kind of, there's like three main sections. There's uh, essentially right along the mountain range, right over here. And then there's kind of the this section and then the main. Okay, so I'm gonna have to come back to this tomorrow. There's a lot more work um, to look at here. Um, and honestly, I'm very uh, nervous about discussing this because there's just so many details um, to look at. 
And lastly, I, I, before we get into the more of the discussion tomorrow, um, you know, essentially, uh, there's just a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, unique ideas uh, that hopefully you have. So, like, definitely take a look um, at the details um, yourself. Um, there's whether you're located, uh, some people, some friends that I have are located in Colombia or Venezuela or Brazil. Um, there's just a whole lot of uh, work, um, even uh, people in uh, Peru or Ecuador. So uh, basically, uh, and, and actually some of the most important work uh, might actually be in these other regions uh, like Venezuela here, uh, Colombia, um, Ecuador and Peru, uh, and then even down into Bolivia, down in here. So with those uh, rain pockets. So definitely um, there's so many different people and so many different perspectives. Um, and I'm sorry I'm speaking in English. Some people listening to this uh, may not even speak English. So there's a whole translation issue going on right now. I'm going to try to post this and there can be some, some translations. But, uh, you know, and, and, and any one detail can be important. I would say also try to look at the bigger picture. Um, I've kind of not looked at the Congo River yet. Um, I wanted to first look at that actually, but I've just spent so much time on the African side that I wanted to early because this is really the main chunk of the work. Uh, in terms of the wildlife, uh, you know, this is, uh, if I zoom out here, I can show you the difference um, between the jungle here. So it's actually kind of a relatively small piece of land. Um, sorry, this is loading, taking some time. So this is a very high resolution map, um, but you can see that actually, if you zoom in here in the uh, Congo, it's actually quite a smaller chunk here. And there's actually kind of a spot where it comes around here. And this all has actually been populated mainly on the south side of the jungle Congo. So, and then especially there's a lot of population like we talked about in here. So, uh, and actually the gorillas have moved back into a couple spots right in here. So, uh, but, uh, you know, in general, what I'm trying to explain here is that that part of the jungle, when you look at the vastness, we're going to go over here. Uh, you can see, uh, it's actually a significantly larger section here. So we definitely need to look at that and you can definitely see the farming is actually even maybe even more significant, uh, leave visible on the satellite imagery, um, in Brazil here. So definitely a concern to think about. Anyway, I hope you really enjoyed this uh, discussion. Um, I would be happy to talk with other people about this, and I hope uh, that you personally can uh, publish and do some homework here on studying this. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff to do here, um, and certainly um, a lot of perspectives. Thank you so much. I really hope that we can think about the wildlife. Very important topic. Thank you so much. And before I get into this, I want to look at one more very significant problem. I wanted to head over to India uh, on this map, and I'm sorry if it's going to load slowly. Uh, I'm going across uh, the Congo jungle. I just wanted to show you how serious the problem is in India. So essentially the scary thing here is that this is all entirely farmland, right? Um, and it looks like there's even barren desert here uh, and uh, some areas here, but essentially India has farmed everything. Um, it's really hard to even explain the map. It looks like, um, you know, and, and even here down into, uh, yeah, this is Thailand, all this has been farmed as well. So really, we don't want that at all to happen in the Congo uh, or uh, in South America in the, the Amazon. So really we're trying to get, we're trying to race here to get to the point of uh, making sure that this doesn't all turn into farmland as well, uh, right? So already Western Africa, significant part of Nigeria is farmland here. So we definitely need to make sure that this is gonna be uh, kept uh, forever, right? This is our only planet. We're not going to have a jungle uh, anywhere else anytime soon. So super important topic uh, to make sure that we get this right. Um, and I wanted to emphasize, uh, I'm really sorry, I needed to get a little bit of water here, but I really want to emphasize one of the philosophies here uh, is to really make sure that we get things perfect, right? Um, you know, uh, perhaps, you know, you don't need to go to college or university to do this. 
uh, kind of research. You can get all these maps online. Um, but what I wanted to emphasize is that what you do need to do is make sure that you study the details and the big picture, right? Like uh, we're gonna look at just the, primarily the Amazon here, but if you're gonna do your homework on this, uh, study every last detail, everything that you possibly can perfectly. Make sure that we got the wildlife covered on every aspect here. Um, we absolutely cannot make any mistakes. Um, that was the, the only real lesson that I learned uh, uh, working with top students uh, from top universities uh, in Asia and around the world. Uh, I was very fortunate to go to a good school, perhaps, but it was a lot of work. Uh, a waste of time in some ways, but the one lesson you learn is you absolutely have to make sure you get everything correct. Um, and when it comes to the jungle and wildlife, there's even a whole nother level of correctness. It's on the spiritual side, and we haven't really discussed that uh, in this topic. Um, I'm going to try to look at that um, as much as I can uh, with you and everyone here. Um, but definitely, um, as we look at the Amazon here, we want to think about uh, how the animals are thinking uh, together collectively about what humans are doing, um, certainly on the south side here. Um, and there's definitely a piece right here. Um, you know, birds fly over this all the time. They fly, uh, you know, uh, thousands of miles sometimes uh, to different parts. Um, and they definitely communicate with the rest of the animals in the jungle um, about the activities of the humans. Um, and there's a whole spiritual communication and uh, concepts that we definitely need to look at. This is kind of uh, what I'm saying here is I, I want to get every aspect of this conversation correct. Um, and I need your help because honestly, I'm not going to be able to do that uh, without your help because we need to get this exactly right. We can't have pollution. We can't have uh, farming here. We got to have the jungle be perfectly correct. Uh, and we got to listen to the wildlife. So really, I don't live in the jungle or even near the jungle. So I've been down to Florida, um, and the climate is somewhat similar there. Um, I have a friend that lives down there. Um, I've been down, down there um, for about a year or so in Florida, actually. But, uh, but there's just so much important work to be done. Um, so please uh, try your very best to look at this and you know we can make this pretty fun and interesting. Uh, like I said, um, I live down in Rio de Janeiro. There's a little pocket here that's actually quite similar to the jungle. So you can uh, actually live, work, and uh, this is actually Rio de Janeiro down here. So you can see this park is pretty green. The ocean front comes in here uh, and uh, actually uh, gives some of the similar climate. There's monkeys in these areas as well. So, uh, and even up into here in Colombia and Venezuela, Caracas and some other areas, uh, and even Panama and, and in Central America. So there's definitely some other options to uh, study the jungle, not directly in the jungle, but have some of the same experience in the area. And actually it could be nicer uh, living next to the mountains and some other areas rather and there's actually no wind in the jungle so interestingly enough uh, this is so far inland that there's actually zero wind on a typical day uh, in the jungle which is very interesting but you do get some fresh breeze along the waterfront um, but that's not to say um, you know there's certain cities that I would definitely not recommend um, in Brazil uh, there's a couple cities here and here uh, essentially taking some of these waterways and you should be cautious about that um, because it's essentially right almost taking land uh, from the jungle but uh, anyway so what I would say sorry I'm trying to catch some breath here uh, discussing this but uh, this is such a great map um, to look at um, so please try to take a careful look at it uh, zoom in and study some details and mostly Make sure that you're not um, stressing out about it because we definitely have to have a solution that works uh, for the wildlife and for humans. So um, try to look at some details. Um, and please let me know because uh, oftentimes the research that other people do uh, that's really fun and interesting, that's the stuff that I love to do. This stuff, I'm just doing the basic homework so that you don't have to do that. Uh, and you basically have a quick presentation on it. Um, the stuff that I love looking at is all the really interesting, fun, and, and cool stuff. So uh, I would love to talk with you about that um, kind of stuff that you're perhaps working on. So um, uh, and just hearing the stories about what's been going on. 
foods. So, uh, you know, and you know, for instance, I I drink a lot of smoothies every day. I get pineapples uh, from Costa Rica up in this way, um, and then even Ecuador, I get a lot of bananas. So, uh, uh, you know, there's just a lot of things that everyday experiences that even in the United States we do depend on food. Uh, and things uh, from this region. So uh, there's lots of things that we can do, um, you know, just in taking a look at the bananas in your grocery store, seeing what's going on with the fruits and vegetables, um, seeing where they're from. A lot of them are from Mexico, um, but uh, there are even some from Ecuador. Um, so uh, take a look at uh, some things. You might be surprised uh, at what, uh, what we can really do. So uh, what I'm always impressed, uh, another thing that I wanted to explain about things is that, you know, once we solve one problem, we can uh, start to do that, uh, you know, for 10, you know, 12 and, and so and, and 100 or more, and it all of a sudden you're solving it at a really big scale. So uh, think about a particular th situation. That's one problem with the discussion that I'm having right here. I'm kind of looking at the whole situation here. Um, but we need to look at a particular issue like in your town or any one of these towns uh, near here if you live in one of these regions uh, we can start to really uh, make a huge impact um, just by thinking about the wildlife and where our food is coming from uh, and how to farm uh, a little bit more cautiously uh, near the jungle so uh, definitely uh, try to think about that Anyway, I'm gonna to try to close this discussion out uh, as soon as possible here. Uh, we're gonna maybe come back to this as soon as possible, um, but I wanted to uh, uh, just thank you uh, and hopefully try to uh, discuss this with you at some point. Thank you so much. Um, thanks again.